Let's solve some more equations. Imagine I'm giving an given an equation like 2x cubed is 250, and I want to solve that. Well, what do I mean by solve it? By solve it, I mean I want to figure out what x is equal to. That means I want to get just a plain x here, and I want to have just numbers here. How am I going to do that? Well, I use inverse operations to get rid of anything I don't want. So what have I got here? I've got 2 multiplied by x cubed. So to get rid of that 2, I must do the inverse operation, which is to divide by 2. And if I do that to that side, then I must also do it to the other side. And what will I get then? I will get that x cubed is equal to 125. Now the question is, what is x actually equal to? Well, hopefully you need immediately by inspection can see that if something cubed is equal to 125, that something has to be 5. But if you didn't see that immediately, you know that the inverse of cubing is taking the cube root, so you must take the cube root of 125, and that'll give you 5. Okay, what about the next one? x squared is 64. What's the inverse of squaring? It is square rooting. So what we have to do here to figure out what x is, is we've got to take the square root, and what we'll get is that x is equal to 8. But there's a little bit of a trick that goes on with square roots, because, in fact, when we square root, it's not completely giving us the full answer. Because what we actually have to do is look at both the positive and the negative square root. Because... 8 squared will give us 64, but also negative 8 squared, because a negative times a negative is positive, will give us 64. So, a little trick to remember, when you're having to solve something that's x squared, don't forget that to do the inverse, you've got to take the positive and the negative square root. Okay, let's look at another couple. Let's look at this one. 3 times the square root of x is equal to 27. I want you to try that for yourself. Pause the video now and do this in your homework books, and then we'll go through it. All right, so you've got 3 times the square root of x, so you want to get rid of that 3. So you're going to do the inverse operation, which is to divide by 3. And what you'll get from that is that square root of x is equal to... 9. And what you're going to do there to get rid of a square root, inverse operation of a square root is to square. And so what you'll get is that x must be equal to 81. Because the square root of 81 is 9. The last little example I want to do with you is ones where you end up with an exponential in the equation. And these ones can be quite funny, but it's easy enough to do. You get, say we have 3 times 2 to the power of x is equal to 24. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this 3. We've got multiplication, so we're going to divide by 3. And then we end up saying 2 to the x is equal to 8. So what we're saying is 2 to some power gives us 8. Now, the easiest way to figure out what that power is, is simply to write 8 as a power of 2, right? In other words, to also write it with exactly the same base. So you should know, well, what is 8 equal to when you write it as 2 to the power of something? 8 is just 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3 gives you 8. And so you can see here... 2 to the x is the same as 2 to the 3. So what is x? x is obviously equal to 3. OK, let's go back to some of our simpler old ones of x plus 1 equals x plus 1. Let's go ahead and solve that equation. So um, remember, we want to get x 
right on its own so we're going to take away we've got a plus one here so we're going to take that away and if we take it away from there we must take it away from there and then we're going to get x is equal to x and so we want to get rid of the x from this side so we're going to take it away from here but if we take it away from there then we're going to must also take it from that side so we're going to get zero equals zero hey how does that help us solve the equation and what on earth does it mean? Well, let's think about what's happened here. Think logically. What does this equation say to us from the start? This equation asks us what number, when you add 1 to it, will give you the same, number, same answer as if you take that number and add 1 to it. Well, if you think about that for a little bit, if you take any number and add 1 to it, it's going to give you the same answer as taking that number and adding 1 to it. And so, in fact, any value of x will be a solution. So any number, let me get a pen to write that, any number is a solution for this equation. All numbers are solutions of this equation. And we can see that. Because when we try and solve the equation, we get down to a statement which says 0 equals 0. And when is 0 equal to 0? 0 is always equal to 0. So this is always true. So this is always true. So this is always true. In other words, x plus 1 is always going to be equal to x plus 1. Any value you put in for x is going to make that true. So x is any number. So that's just having a look here. If you end up in a funny situation like that, go back and have a look and see where did you start off. Possibly you made a mistake, but actually if you've got a statement like this that says where is x plus 1 equal to x plus 1, thinking about it for a few seconds you should immediately be able to say huh, x plus 1 is always equal to x plus 1 no matter what value of x I try and put in. Let's look at another funny one like this. Now I want you to pause the video and think about this for a little while. What do you think my answer is going to be to this thing? x minus 2 is equal to x minus 5. Pause and think. All right. Did you think through this properly? And think, this says, what number, when I subtract 2 from it, is going to be exactly the same as when I subtract 5 from it? If you think about it, that's not possible. If you start with a number and subtract 2 from it, it can't possibly give you the same answer as then if you start with that number and subtract 5 from it. There's no way you're going to be able to. So in fact, we can immediately say that this thing has no solution. But let's imagine we just gaily went along and tried to solve this thing. So we tried to get x on its own here, so we're going to add 2 to get rid of the negative 2. So if we do that to this side, we must do it to that side. And so what we will get is we will get x is equal to negative 5 plus 2. That gives me negative 3. And then we want to um, get rid of the x from here. So we subtract x, but if we do it to that side, we do it to that side. And so what we'll get here is x minus x. That gives me 0. Here we'll get x minus x is 0. Minus 3 gives me negative 3. Now look at the statement. Where do we end up? We end up saying 0 is equal to negative 3. And that is complete, total and utter rubbish. There is no way that 0 can be equal to negative 3, which is what tells us we have no solution. Let's finish up with a little word problem. I have three more marbles than my brother. Together my brother and I have 19 marbles, how many marbles do I have? Now I find it helps me to draw a little picture so I really understand what's going on. So let me sort of, oh, let me get a pen rather than that. Um, let me say here's me, my marbles, right? I've got this, um, so this is mine. I'm just going to say M for marbles. So there's my marbles. Now my, my brother has marbles too, but he, I have three more marbles than my brother's. So if I draw my brother's pile of marbles, must it be smaller or bigger than mine? I have three more marbles than my brother, so his must be a smaller pile, right? So 
the picture of my brother's marbles will be like that, all right? So this is my brother's marbles. And how much more do I have? Well, it is three. That's how many more. And all together, if I add my blue ones and his red ones, I'll end up with 19. Okay, so now we've got to make a little equation. Let's call my marbles x. I often decide to call, right, what I want to find x. Because how many marbles do I have? I want to work out what x is, the number of marbles I have. So now I need to write my brother's marbles in terms of x. Well, how, does, how do my brother's marbles, the amount he has, relate to x? Well, x is this whole big lot, and his are just three less than what x is. So my brother's marbles must be x subtract 3. Whatever I had, his is just 3 less, subtract 3. And now, what I know is that when I add together my blue marbles and my brother's red marbles, I end up... So I take my blue marbles, my brother's red marbles, and in total, those make 19. Now that's a nice easy equation to solve. x and x, that gives me, I've got one x and another x, so I've got two x's, minus third, 3 is equal to 19. I want to get rid of this 3, so I must add 3. If I do it to this side, I must do it to the other side, and here I'll get... 2x is equal to 19 plus 3 is 22. I want to get rid of this 2. It's 2 times x, so I divide by 2. I divide by 2 here, and I will get x is equal to 11. How many marbles do I have? I have 11 marbles.